We have with us Dr. Thierry Hulo, who heads the supply chain and manufacturing globally for Merck KGA, the German uh, drug company. Thanks a lot, Dr. Hulo, for speaking with CNBC TV 18. Uh, let me start by asking you, a lot of uh, multinational drug companies have made India their base for manufacturing. If we talk about Merck, uh, where does India stand as far as manufacturing is concerned? So, uh, as you know, we have a plant here in Goa. We have been in Goa for a bit more than 30 years. This plant in Goa, just to give you some figures, manufacture uh, 600 million capsules a year. It's the biggest sterile ampoule plant of the Merck Group. And in India, where we manufacture every year 160 million sterile ampoules. So it's just to tell you how significant, how important is this plan to save the patient in India. Mm -hmm. uh, if we talk about Merck globally and your manufacturing units across uh, emerging markets, across the global markets, uh, where, where does India stand uh, if we compare it, if, if we use a comparative, let's say, uh, uh, versus Germany, which is your, uh, which is your base, uh, or versus China, where you've made a lot of investments recently? So, currently this is our biggest plant in an emerging market. Mm -hmm. uh, we are building in China, but the plant do not operate well yet. It's under construction and it will open uh, late 2016, early 2017. So, India is our biggest plant in emerging markets. We have smaller plant in Latin America, in Mexico and in Rio. And being a pharmaceutical company based in Europe for three and a half century, yes, most of our manufacturing capabilities are based in Europe, mm -hmm. but our approach was from the beginning to serve India from India, mm -hmm. which we are doing from Goa. Mm -hmm. You have a plant in Goa, which you said uh, is one of the largest in the emerging markets. Uh, does it service only the Indian market, or you also export out of this plant? Uh, which are the markets that it services, and which are the core products that you make? Uh, which are the key products that you make in this Goa plant? So, actually, uh, the demand in India has been incre increasing so fast that we have been serving from this plant in Goa, essentially India, trying to, to cope with the demand. So we are growing with the demand. Mm -hmm. uh, from this plant uh, here in Goa, we have uh, vitamins, multivitamins product. We have products for general medicines. So addressing the most, let's say, uh, needed product for the market here. Mm -hmm. So it's the Indian market that currently uh, Goa plant services. Any plans of expanding manufacturing at this unit, investments that you would want to make? And also if you would want to expand uh, uh, the reach for this plant uh, beyond India and service some of the other markets, maybe in the emerging market space? Well, actually, we, we have a plan to increase our capacity to be able to cope with the Indian demand, mm -hmm. which is growing. And uh, we are growing in our business for Merxerono in India, uh, which was a business that hit uh, 65 million euro last year, uh, faster than the industry average. Mm -hmm. So we are really concentrating our effort to maintain the high quality of this plant to serve the Indian market, which is a very big market for us. So what sort of investments are you planning in manufacturing in India? Are you planning to set up new plants beyond this one to service India? Any plans? Uh, no plans of using India as a base to service other markets? Well, actually, our plans are, are basically to expand our capacity uh, in terms of ampoule and ampoule filling, mm -hmm. where the demand is strongly increasing. Mm -hmm. So one step after the other. Let's start by increasing next year our capacity uh, for ampoule uh, in a sterile environment. For the Indian market. For the Indian market. And what would be the kind of expansion that you would look at uh, for, for this? Or the, basically, you, need, you, know, you can invest uh, in a new line. You can increase the capacity of each line. You can uh, rationalize the flow of product to be more efficient. Mm -hmm. You know, we have been in this plant working for three decades in continuous improvement. Mm -hmm. This is our journey. Mm -hmm. We sustain it with the right invest investment, not only in equipment, but also in people. A plant only operates if you have the right people, and this is what we have been building and maturing here in India, in Goa, for more than 30 years. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, recently, our new Prime Minister Narendra Modi has gone uh, all around the world talking about make in India, uh, uh, the theory that he's come up with that come come set up your manufacturing bases in India, we'll provide you land, we'll provide you with policies that will help you uh, expand your manufacturing bases and you can service uh, uh, the rest of the world uh, markets from your bases in India. Uh, how uh, confident, uh, you know, uh, a pharma, from a pharma manufacturing uh, perspective, how confidence, how much confidence does that give you? Would you eventually look at, uh, uh, you know, making India your manufacturing hub maybe for some of the markets? Would that be in the, on the, in the thought process of the management right now? Well, actually what is it in the top of our mind is uh, to serve the market as much as possible uh, regionally or locally. Okay. So one of our key goals, and we, we started this journey a couple of decades ago, was to say, let's serve India from India as much as we can. Correct. So this has been our approach, mm -hmm. and we are maturing and growing on this. Mm -hmm. uh, how, is, how is the strategy? You said uh, your strategy is to grow locally, serve the local markets. If we talk about the overall emerging markets pack, uh, in terms of manufacturing, in terms of global supply chain for Merck, how does it look like? Uh, what is the model that uh, uh, you're using for mon most of the major markets, if you would say? Uh, to make a long story short, I would say we have two plants in Latin America mm -hmm. to serve Latin America. Mm -hmm. We have one in India to serve India. And we are building a plant in China to serve China. Mm -hmm. Most of the other markets are being served from our plants based in Europe and with uh, some contract manufacturing organization and third parties. Mm -hmm. uh, in India, you recently signed a deal with Lupin uh, for some uh, products that you would be manufacturing for the emerging market space. Could you run us through what was the thinking behind that deal and how, do you, how would you see that progress? Well, uh, as you know, Merck has always been very open for partnership and deals. Mm -hmm. and, and to uh, either have product coming from our own research and development mm -hmm. or to team up with others. And this has been part of our expansion strategy for Indian and, uh, India and emerging markets. And uh, we have had a long discussion with the uh, Lupin team. And we believe that they are a strong partner to help us to further enrich our portfolio, serving India and other emerging markets for the year to come. Mm -hmm. And which would, which would be these disease uh, uh, therapy categories that you would be focusing on, uh, the kind of a number of products? I, I, I presume it's 20 products that you're looking at uh, as part of the deal. Um, any timelines that you've spoken? Have you looked at those products in development? Uh, what's your assessment right now? Well, uh, our assessment is these are products that will, let's say, enrich of our portfolio mm -hmm. of uh, uh, general medicine to make it a broader term and uh, we have looked at the molecule on which we were in a position to team up with Lupin and this will grow over time. You mm -hmm. know, we are addressing this partnership very openly minded. Uh, I read that one of the reports said that you're looking at tying up with some of the uh, local manufacturers to help you supply products for the emerging markets. So I wanted to understand what's the strategy. Would you increase your own manufacturing in a country like India to service emerging markets? Or would you look at tying up with local companies, source uh, uh, products uh, uh, like a supply, uh, supply chain deal, uh, product supply ah, deal okay, to service uh, the emerging okay. markets, which is very my question is coming from. Okay, I got it. Thank you for clarification. Uh, all manufacturing strategy for emerging market, mm -hmm. and let's make it more specific for India tonight, mm -hmm. uh, is a couple of products we product produce on our own from the country, from India to India. Mm -hmm. A couple of products like biotech product, where basically we have only one plant over the world, mm -hmm. we import to India. Mm -hmm. Couple of product, we team up with a uh, well-recognized player, as a recent deal we announced with Lupin, mm -hmm. and here they will manufacture for us because they have the infrastructure and the equipment. So it's really an open-minded strategy and making what is right for the patient is what drives us. Mm -hmm. When we talk about policies uh, in, in emerging markets, I'm not restricting my question to only India, but uh, policies for manufacturing across uh, the em emerging market space, uh, how comfortable are you with the policies in these markets? Which market do you think has uh, some of the easiest policies to go set up manufacturing and has he actually helped Merck grow their manufacturing base? I see more and more a trend toward an harmonization. 
that in each and every country, uh, government are putting in place policies uh, supporting entrepreneurship, uh, supporting manufacturing approach, mm -hmm. but at the same time raising the bar for quality. And you know, Merck forever has been standing for quality. This is our motto. This is why it drives us, because this is absolutely what it makes good for the patient. Mm -hmm. And we are in this journey. Mm -hmm. uh, coming back to the Goa facility that you have, and you plan to expand that facility, are you planning to uh, bring in new products to the Indian market from that plant, like adding more products to the plant? Or it would be expanding uh, volumes uh, for the existing products that you're making there? It would be a mixed. Oh, the next one to come will be a vitamin D capsules. Uh, the demand for vitamin D capsules is simply increasing, and we believe it will be a good add-on to our portfolio and our expertise, and we will start this uh, during the course of next year. Mm -hmm. How big is India in terms of revenues for uh, overall Merck, and uh, with all the expansions, market growing, what sort of growth are you looking in the Indian market? Uh, so I will not make any kind of forward-looking statement tonight. I would say that our pharmaceutical business in India for Max Erono is was uh, 65 million euro last year, mm. and uh, it has been growing uh, faster than the market trend. Okay. That was a safe answer to make. Okay, I'll come, come to a question which has been uh, a, a cause of concern for most of the Indian uh, manufacturing units of late. I ask you this question with your experience of global manufacturing, and that is to do with GMP compliance. Uh, how crucial, uh, you know, do you think is uh, the GMP compliance? As we've seen a lot of Indian companies faltering of late uh, as far as US FDA audits are concerned, or the European uh, EME audits are concerned. Um, uh, in your experience, where do you think uh, the bar needs to be raised? Well, uh, I'm not the regulator, so I'm not fixing the bar. Mm. But CGMP compliance is not an option, is what we own to the patients. Mm. And Merck uh, has been on a quality journey since the beginning. We are pursuing on this journey. This goes with permanent, consistent investment in infrastructure, in equipment, and in people. Mm -hmm. Quality is what we own to the patient. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when, when uh, you have your, you, uh, globally you have your plans which are approved by the US FDA or the other bigger uh, regulators, whether it's the Japanese one or, or the European ones, Australian ones, uh, what is it that, uh, you know, as a team, uh, that you tell your team, as, as a leader that you tell your team when you talk about quality to them, um, what is it uh, that should drive the, uh, the, the, the bar uh, when we talk about quality and processes in a pharma plant? Well, you know, it's a journey of continuous improvement. Hmm. That day after day, you raise your bar for quality. You learn from the past. You learn how to improve your processes to make them more reliable to make them more stable. And this has been our journey, but this also has been the journey of most of the regulator worldwide. Mm. And I believe that this is really what the pharma industry owns to the patients this we say of daily. Mm -hmm. Do you think the regulators in the last three, four, five years have become even more stringent when it comes to uh, norms, when it comes to compliance? I will not say that because if I, if I look back 10 years down the street, mm -hmm. you may have asked me the same questions. So it's a business which is highly technical, it's highly specific, and as we go, we learn and we change our standards for the better and the good of the patient we serve. Mm -hmm. Um, if we talk about the, the Goa plant, what sort of uh, GMP compliance status you have currently in terms of approvals from, uh, uh, from the regulators, and are you planning to seek more regu regulatory approvals for that plant? Well, you know, uh, each and every product we manufacture out of this plant has been fully approved, endorsed, and validated by the Indian authorities. Mm -hmm. Every time we establish a new product, we get the related uh, agreement approval. We are, this plant has been subject to regular inspection by the uh, local and Indian authorities. So 
we, we plan no more no less we we keep going on this partnership Mm -hmm. having according to the market requirements for the good of the patients. Mm -hmm. uh, so the 65 million euro revenues for the pharma division that you spoke about, how much of that is serviced by the plant in Goa, the pharma plant in Goa, and how much is serviced by the products that you import or maybe from your contractors? Okay, so the plant in Goa account for 25% of the total. Then uh, the rest is mainly due to the import of biotech product manufactured within Merck Serono, mm -hmm. and uh, the last part is due to lo is linked to local uh, contract manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, are you looking at expanding your base in terms of uh, tie-ups with these contract manufacturers or maybe with more deals like the one that you've done with Lupin to help you service the other markets or even Indian market for that matter? We are open. As you mentioned, we are simply open for that. What drives us is how to best serve the patients. Mm -hmm. Any talks currently right now for any of your products that you would look at some local uh, manufacturer or um, uh, you know, supplier to help you uh, expand in the Indian market? Any key product that you would want to bring into India through this route? Okay, we don't comment on future partnership as long as they're not uh, finalized, so I will make no forward-looking statement. All right. Uh, let me ask you about the supply chain, uh, 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 the, the division also that you handle, uh, which comes as part and parcel of manufacturing. Uh, is there a specific uh, strategy that Merck uses when we talk about supply chain um, that, that, that helps it uh, move faster into the market uh, and serves the market that it has? Well, you know, uh, Supply chain is getting more and more complex, mm -hmm. more and more control. Uh, we want to secure during all the logistic aspects, uh, the stability and the safety of the product. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in Merck, uh, we, we have a global reach for product, which makes the complexity of the supply chain, mm -hmm. uh, which actually in India works extremely well. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are facing, like uh, any other pharma, co pharma company, uh, increasing regulation in the supply chain and the logistics, but this is part of our mandate to sell the patients. Mm -hmm. uh, India, uh, is there a specific uh, uh, you know, way that you look at supply chain? Uh, because Indian market is a market where you need to penetrate uh, deep down, deeper uh, rural markets, tier one, tier two, and it's, it's, it's a very diverse set of market. So I'm not the guy for this one. All right, I'll skip this question then. Um, uh, one comment, you've, you've started your pharma, uh, a power plant here that would uh, fuel your pharma and your chemical units uh, in Goa. If you could run us through uh, the sort of investments that you've made in this uh, power plant and what was uh, the key driver or the thought behind setting up a power plant? Okay, so, you know, our business in India, in pharmaceutical, has been growing. And... A couple of years ago, in 2006, if I remember correct, uh, Merck as a company set a goal to say, we have to really enhance our corporate social responsibility and decrease our uh, carbon dioxide consumption. And we call this within the Merck group the Edison project. As I mentioned before, having Goa as our biggest plant in emerging markets, of course we immediately look and say likely our energy consumption is Goa is pretty high. Is there something we can do that will benefit for the local community, benefit for more employees and reduce our energy footprint? Mm -hmm. And we end up with what I call uh, a, a real win-win situation. What does it mean? It means that you know that in this area of India, in Goa, there's plenty of farmers uh, farming uh, uh, cashew nuts and coconuts. And in the harvest process, they have the waste, just the shells of the coconuts, coconuts and the cashews. So uh, the idea was, let's take this waste, let's burn it, this biomass, to create energy to create electricity and to create steam for the plant. So this is what we have just opened today. This is a plant that has required a 3 million euro investment. This is a plant that will generate a power of 3 megawatts, so a very significant amount of power that will cover 95% of the need of the plant in the future. So the plant is really going green. This will reduce our carbon dioxide consumption 
by uh, 11,000 ton per year, which is monumental, I would say. And it will bring back good for the community because we will stop acquiring electricity and power from the local authorities, so all this energy will be available to cope with the increasing demand of the local population. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, would the power plant, uh, uh, the, the three megawatt, all be required by the uh, pharma and the chemical unit there, or would you have surplus that you would look to sell to the grids, maybe uh, to the government, uh, as, as a on a commercial basis? Okay, let's be clear. We are a pharmaceutical company. Uh, and a chemical one. Uh, we manufacture medicines for the patient. Mm -hmm. We are not an energy supplier. Mm -hmm. Having said that, at the beginning and during the ramp up phase, we will not use 100% of the energy and we don't want this to be wasted, so we, we, we will sell it back locally. But mm -hmm. uh, the minute the plant will consume it all, we will use it all. Mm -hmm. uh just as a macro question from the uh, global pharma manufacturing uh, that we see across uh, companies, uh, you, you are an expert here and which is why I ask you, what sort of a trend are you seeing when we talk about global manufacturing, when we talk about big companies like Merck um, or others like Abbott and all are talking about manufacturing, shifting their bases to some of the emerging markets, what sort of trend uh, uh, do you see emerging in the pharma manufacturing space globally? Well, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I see a trend uh, to serve markets uh, regionally or locally, especially for pharmaceuticals, small molecule product, uh, tablets, capsules, this kind of product. Mm -hmm. For biotech, it's more mixed. Uh, most of the base is right now in the US and in Europe. I know we see a small trend going towards some emerging markets, but we are only at the early days of this. Uh, do you see going forward in the next couple of years, let's say three to five years timeline if we see, for biotech also there could be a trend of uh, this manufacturing moving to emerging markets because a lot of uh, companies locally uh, in emerging markets are looking at producing some of these biosimilars and are progressing. Yeah, but this, this, will, this is a, a business for which uh, the cycle time is much longer. If you want to build a biotech plant, mm -hmm. it easily takes four years. So this is really long-term trends because you need to build and then you need to commission and validate and this is long lead time. Mm -hmm. Just one question in the biosimilars industry because I ask you because you have a past uh, 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 expertise in, in handling the biosimilars division for Merck. Uh, where do you see globally the biosimilars pipeline and the portfolio uh, going? Do you think companies have actually taken a lot longer than what they had anticipated in reaching where they are right now? And do you think the, uh, the biosimilars hitting the market is still some time away? Uh, Biosimilar eating the market is not some time away. It's already reality in India. Mm -hmm. It's already reality in most of the emerging and mature market. If you look at what I call the first generation of biosimilars, so it's, it's more uh, the EPO kind of product. Mm -hmm. What is taking a bit longer is the, for the monoclonal antibodies, mm -hmm. addressing uh, oncology or... Uh, immuno-oncology. Uh, this takes longer because this requires uh, some uh, phase three clinical trials, but this is coming. This will come, this will start. We have seen the first uh, monoclonal antibodies uh, being commercialized uh, in some emerging market and in Europe already. Some more are coming, some are in the pipelines. Uh, biosimilars for monoclonal antibodies are becoming a reality. Mm -hmm. uh, how long do you think would that be if we talk about the regulated markets, if we talk about the developed markets like the US and the Europe where the pathways are still uh, evolving? Um, wh where, where do you think uh, the, mar the uh, companies are heading as far as these two bigger markets? Are concerned? Well, I would say first, the first limitation is the end of the uh, patent protection for the originator molecule, mm -hmm. which is something that we really start uh, next year and the year after. Then definitely in the US it's a journey. Everyone is looking for the first monoclonal antibodies biosimilar to be registered in the US. Mm -hmm. 
So let's let's watch it carefully. Mm -hmm. And Merck is uh, pretty much uh, ahead in the race when we talk about uh, biosimilars. You also have a deal with Dr. Reddy's. How is that progressing? If you could. So uh, as you know, Merck uh, has embarked in a biosimilar, um, creating a biosimilar unit uh, three years ago. Uh, we have recently announced that our portfolio is progressing that uh, we have molecules that will enter phase three uh, uh, next year and the year after, that we are increasing our investment and we are considering to invest between 130 and 150 uh, million euro in our biosimilar pipeline uh, next year. Mm -hmm. And this product which will get into the phase two and phase three is uh, uh, in partnership with Dr. Reddy's or it's, uh, it's, it's done uh, uh, entirely on its own by Merck? You know, uh, there's a fierce competition for biosimilars, uh, and we have uh, decided not to disclose our portfolio with too much details. All right. Uh, Dr. Hulu, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, from global manufacturing to India manufacturing to biosimilars, uh, and great to get this perspective from you. Thanks a lot for taking out time for CNBC TV 18.